70s was an unholy decade for horror films. First there was The Exorcist, and then The Omen. Both center around a young child and involve evil supernatural powers. The child in The Omen is a young boy named Damien who is switched at birth, deliberately by a group of Satanists. Damien is supposedly the son of Satan, and it's all part of an elaborate conspiracy so that Damien can grow up under the custody of Robert Thorne, a wealthy political leader played by A-list actor Gregory Peck. Damien is being watched over by an evil nanny, while Robert is always being approached by a raving priest who's trying to warn him about Damien. I saw its mother. You're referring to my wife. It's mother, Mr. Thorne. This is blackmail, and come out and say it. What is it that you're trying to say? His mother was a... There's also this nosy photographer who's been going around snapping pictures and starts accumulating a bunch of evidence to support what the priest says. Then a bunch of bizarre deaths take place. Robert and the photographer go off on a big investigation to find out what really happened at the hospital and to discover the origin of Damien. As anyone would know from the beginning, he's the son of Satan. Big surprise. The film is 1 hour 50 minutes. For a horror film that long, it doesn't feel complete. It feels like the setup to a horror film stretched out. But I suppose that's the point. It's meant to build up a lot of suspense only to leave you hanging at the end and leave the rest to your imagination. Damien barely does anything, but the movie isn't really about him. It's more about the circumstances surrounding him which lead to his rise of power. The problem I have is that the movie assumes you already know what the Son of Satan is capable of doing, and I say, show me. There is another famous film, Rosemary's Baby, which predated The Omen, and it's a similar conspiracy story about a woman who is somehow secretly impregnated by Satan. It's just like The Omen, where the entire movie is the setup. Somehow, this kind of subject matter about devil childs really connected with audiences. Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, and The Omen were all big-budget mainstream successes and all won Academy Awards. It's a biased industry that just happened to be fascinated with these kind of movies and really took this devil shit seriously. That's not to say it isn't a good movie. It's competent, well-made, well-acted, the location cinematography is gorgeous, but it's very talky and slow-paced. There are certain scenes that I think are amazing, like early on there's a birthday party going on for Damien. The movie's off to such a slow start, it gives you the chance to get bored, to let your guard down, and all of a sudden, this happens. It's all for you! It comes out of nowhere! A very effective shocker. I also really like the moment after the priest talks to Robert for the last time. A powerful windstorm starts raging on, and the priest runs for shelter. It's a very foreboding scene that caps it off very nicely with another over-the-top death. I also have to mention the head decapitation, which is so off-tone with the rest of the movie. The effect is great, but the way in which the glass cuts the head so perfectly clean off is just fucking laughable in contrast with how serious the rest of the film takes itself. For me, it's a movie about highlights, great individual moments. Even though I don't share the same level of enthusiasm for the overall film as much as everyone else. I must mention it was directed by Richard Donner, known for Superman and Lethal Weapon. At last, the music by Jerry Goldsmith is fantastic. It's one of the most evil, haunting scores ever composed for a horror film. It won the Oscar for Best Original Score and was nominated for Best Original Song. The only time I can think of where a song with lyrics that say in Latin, Hail the Antichrist, was nominated. You'd think there was a conspiracy of Satanists behind the movie industry. Happy